approach has taken you to this ethic view as an outsider and why you did that and if it wouldn't have been more productive if you would have taken an insider's perspective an emic view in which the understanding from within the community would have been uh, more to the forefront of your analysis thank you <coughs> Thank you very much, highly learned member of uh, the committee. Uh, <clears throat> well, uh, you know, by its nature, human trafficking is a global phenomenon. Uh, it's a globally networked uh, crime. It's not the issue of one nation, one local area. It's a serious issue, a global uh, serious issue. Uh, and on the other hand, human trafficking is very complex. It's a process, it's a very uh, complex. So many actors and the part factors are involved in human trafficking. That makes it, uh, uh, human, that makes, you know, human trafficking is very uh, serious and very uh, complex. Well, based on uh, this, uh, in my uh, 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 I mean in uh, my uh, just you know there is two school of uh, thoughts that I have tried to uh, see in uh, my thesis uh, there is a liberal uh, thoughts and there is uh, material uh, thought. Of course, you know, uh, the liberal inclined uh, legal framework that has been uh, recognized uh, and endorsed by United Nations uh, is especially, you know, fighting human trafficking or anti-trafficking uh, is is about law and order, according to the liberal freedom and emancipation. And it's about all the issue of human rights, because human trafficking uh, is degrading the human integrity, the human dignity. So, you know, the liberal freedom and emancipation, according to the liberal freedom and emancipation perspective, is, is it's a victim-centered, to free the trafficked who have been controlled under the trafficker and enabling them to regain their rights, their freedom. Uh, this, this is, this is uh, the perspective of uh, liberal freedom and emancipation. Of course, this is good because I agree with that anti-human trafficking is, is all about law and order. But the problem is, it's not only about law, law and order. It's about human needs also. The root cause of human trafficking, particularly women trafficking, is poverty. The serious issue, the main root cause is poverty. Unless the issue of the material issue, the human need and the human want is addressed, the poverty issue is addressed by uh, promoting or by trying to implementing only law and order cannot prevent or cannot stop human trafficking. So <clears throat> even, you know, we observe that from international convention to the national to Ethiopia and the local to RC, there are a dozen of uh, legal policy and instruments there is no problem with the legal instruments so far, even in a local RC. But the problem is, 
you know, despite the existence of all this legal framework, you know, this legal framework couldn't stop women trafficking, human trafficking, particularly women trafficking in RC. The root cause should have to be addressed. Look, you know, no problem with the legal framework from international to national to local. No problem with that. But the paradox is human trafficking is increasing nowadays, time to time. If law and the order can stop it, you know, we cannot see the, the dramatical increasing of human trafficking. Therefore, I am proposing and argue that law and order is very important to mitigate or to stop the human trafficking. In addition to that, addressing the human needs, the material issue, the economy issue, poverty issue is very important. Therefore, I am proposing that integrated approach is very important. By the way, this perspective, the two perspectives are not opposing each other, they complement each other. Therefore, you know, uh, to to, to control women trafficking, you know, the integrated approach is very important. That's, that's what I found in, in uh, uh, my research. Uh, well, as you have said, of course, you know, human trafficking is by its nature, you know, it's very complicated. It's very secreted, by the way. It's, the population are very hidden. It's not visible. Uh, it's, it's a concealed enterprises. So because of that, you know, it has many complications and the complexities. But, you know, since it is an international issue to elevate, to stop human trafficking, this uh, two integrated uh, conceptual framework is very important. As of me, this is uh, very important and I recommend uh, the integrated uh, approach. I don't know whether I have got your question or not. Well, maybe uh, just um, as a very short follow-up, because I think that uh, time... May uh, I ask you to, to, to be very brief, because we are very otherwise brief. running behind schedule. And I, hope that I hand over to my uh, next colleague. Chair. Then the examination shall be continued by Professor van der Leun. Could you please unmute your microphone? We cannot hear you. We are not saying it. Can you say something now, uh, Professor? Yeah. Um, dear candidates, first of all, congratulations with your well researched thesis. I think you have produced an original addition to the sometimes somewhat repetitive literature on trafficking in human beings worldwide, especially when it comes to the legal frameworks. With regard to the legal side, it has often been noticed that from the trafficking protocol's inception, the United States has dominated the international anti-trafficking law and policy arena, especially in the beginning with the rather aggressive perpetrator-focused approach. When you show your results, um, your, the results of this approach are not only disappointing, but if, if I understand you correctly, also symbolic, and sometimes even non-existent in practice. This reminds me of the work by Jamie Chuang on the exploitation creep. And Chuang describes how the U.S. model has been uh, exported um, without being a, a good fit with the other jurisdictions' realities. And therefore, for instance, in the European literature, we see a move forward to a more labor rights perspective, which is now seen as more important. And if I look at your empirical findings, in which you emphasize the vulnerability based on structural factors rather than on individual choices or illicit activities, 
My question, therefore, is to what extent would interventions based on a labor approach, also a legal approach, but a different one, and on, on migrants' rights or women's rights, be mo much more uh, helpful? And uh, in addition to that, and it's, it ties in, I think, with the, with the question before, you state that the two dominant conceptual legal frameworks complement each other or frameworks complement each other and you want to integrate them but it could it also be that the present international legal approach towards trafficking in human beings is even counterproductive in other situations than the, uh, than the, the u.s model thank you very much <laughs> Thank you, highly learned member of uh, the committee. Uh, well, uh, just I have, uh, as I have uh, uh, tried to state it earlier, uh, the issue of uh, legal policy uh, instrument is very uh, important. Uh, to address or to to uh, to stop, you know, the uh, human uh, trafficking. This is when the legal framework is uh, recognized by a United Nation, uh, it's a United Nation Convention, and uh, since you know Ethiopia is one of the signatory uh, country. This uh, legal framework is part and the parcel of uh, the Ethiopian legal uh, system based on uh, this international legal framework. Uh, Ethiopia uh, have produced so many provisions and the, and the proclamations. So far, uh, it's, it's good uh, in, in my view. But the problem here is, uh, especially, you know, specific to Ethiopia, uh, at federal level, there is a strong commitment to elevate or to stop, you know, uh, this woman trafficking. The awareness and even the actions and using you know, different instruments to, uh, to elevate this problem. The effort so far at federal level is, uh, seems to be good, but the problem is uh, at regional uh, level at local district administrative, there is no equal understanding between federal and government, even law enforcement between law enforcement agencies. That is a problem. Uh, the federal government formulates uh, the the law, but the implementer is a local government. The local the district government at RC level, but even uh, it's not at public level, even within law enforcement organs, there is a confusion to understand these uh, uh, legal frameworks. And because of that, uh, I think, you know, this implementation have uh, a problem. And as I have suggested, uh, you know, public awareness is very important. Clear understanding between government officials between anti-trafficking institutions and law enforcement agencies, that is very important. Uh, but beyond that, the issue of economy, the issue of poverty is very serious, as of me. That is very important and very critical. Is that is the root causes. Unless, you know, the material issue, the poverty issue is addressed, it can be at the local government, at the regional level, uh, level uh, unless that issue is addressed, it's uh, really difficult to, to mitigate or to elevate the issues of human uh, trafficking. It has, as I said, it has so many complicate, complicated issues. Uh, even, you know, the surprising issue is, even, you know, there is a loophole within legal framework also. The law enforcement organs, even since the proclamation didn't clarify who is the trafficker. 
It's not clear even for uh, law enforcement agencies. They're not clear. Because in a recruitment of women trafficking, the families are involved. The friends are relatives, neighbors are involved. And the rural recruiters at village level are involved. The traffickers, the PAs are involved. But who are the tra traffickers really? It's, it's not clear. Can we say the families, the peer groups, the friends who are participating in this process, are they traffickers or not? Are they criminal or not? It's not clear. Because of that, really, you know, no one wants to uh, expose a trafficker in the public. They don't want to expose. They don't want to uh, uh, give their testimonies, or they don't want to testify uh, before uh, court. So even the serious problem is no one see it human trafficking as a crime. As a crime, Mr. that's the problem. Because human trafficking is highly socially embedded socially embedded issue so because may, may of that I, sorry excuse me may i ask you to end your uh, discussion because I, I would like to go to the next opponent so if you are, okay if not then the examination shall be continued by your promoter professor Hossi. Mr. Piantet, your research focuses on a tremendously important topic, and it affects many, many lives. Uh, I would like to ask you um, two questions predominantly. Uh, one is, if your research um, would not have focused on those that have returned, that are kind of free of reprisal, do you think there would have been ways to also get information in another context from those that are still affected and are in the middle of that situation. So in other words, those that have not returned yet, but those that are still in these very vulnerable positions. Uh, is there a way? Could you think about ways that that information could actually be collected? And the second follow-up is, how about a collaboration with United Nations offices and agencies, like the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime, that is tremendously active, also in the Ethiopian context? Can you tell us something about the alignment of, let's say, the local uh, legal uh, activities with the activities and aims and goals of such an agency? May I ask you for a brief answer, please? Thank you. Highly learned member of uh, committees. I think if I got uh, your question, the first question is about how I have collected the information, the data. It is actually, can you think uh, about collecting the data also for those that have not returned yet? Could you see a way that that could be done? Uh, well, I have, uh, I have collected you know, data in, uh, in a different uh, research you know, uh, procedures. By, I have used the qualitative and the quantitative approach. Uh, you know, uh, the methods I have used is an uh, interview uh, and focus group discussion, uh, and then the questionnaire also for uh, about 273 uh, sample size, and also field observation summary notes, uh, and examining uh, the legal, the existing legal uh, framework is also another uh, source. So, well, using the questionnaire, I have tried to reach uh, 273 uh, informants. And by using, that is very important because it helps me to gather information, evidence from a large uh, number of uh, sampling size. Uh, in this case, of course, uh, questionnaire is very important for the issues of uh, privacy, 
and also the issues of uh, confidentiality. And it helps me to understand about uh, the issues, fully understand about the women trafficking. And also I've used uh, uh, focus group uh, discussion, I mean, focus group uh, discussion and uh, uh, also interview. So by diversifying uh, this source of information, I have tried to uh, collect uh, the information and try to analyze based on uh, these sources, especially particularly for questions. I've tried based on uh, data analysis. I have used IPSS uh, uh, analysis, I mean, uh, software. And for the remaining focus group discussion and uh, interview, I have used content analysis based on this. I have tried to collect the data and uh, try to analyze my my thesis. Um, as far as the issues of the alignments of the United Nations in collaboration with uh, uh, with uh, specific to my study area, well, uh, Ethiopia is one of the signatory. Ethiopia is uh, the one who ratified, you know, this uh, convention and obliged to implement uh, these uh, legal frameworks. So, well, uh, as I have said earlier, the commitment at federal level is so good. I couldn't see a such serious problem, despite, you know, all these minor problems. But the problem is not only Ethiopia, even, you know, the remaining countries, you know, at international level, they sign any treaties, agreements, but the implementation is totally different. That is a problem. And this is what I, I could have seen here in uh, Ethiopia, especially at a local uh, level, uh, specific to uh, my study area, RC. Well, the collaboration and the alignment uh, is not a such uh, serious problem. Ethiopia is uh, working with the United Nations, but the implementation is still very serious at local level. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Then the examination shall be continued by Professor Dietz. Mr. Candidate, in your study, you also interviewed and studied the traffickers themselves. That must have been extremely difficult as a methodology and also as a personal experience. Can you tell us how these traffickers saw themselves, what their economic and social careers have been so far? Do they see themselves as businessmen and businesswomen? Do they regard their income from trafficking as a starting capital for other business ventures? How do, they see them, how do they themselves defend their actions in light of their religious backgrounds and beliefs? And does it give them status in their own community? Please share with us your insights in these matters. Thank you very much, highly learned opponents. Uh, well, uh, you know, during my research, it's really uh, too tough and very difficult to get the traffickers, especially the traffickers. It's very, very tough. Of course, the returnees, the returnees, they don't have uh, a serious problem to tell you what happened to them and what's happening. They don't have after they return it. But the traffickers, to find the traffickers is very, very, very tough. Uh, because, you know, they are invisible. Invisibly, they are networked. Some, they know each other, but the remaining, you know, they don't know who the trafficker is, even those parties who are involved in this process. But in this issue, you know, most of the time, you know, when the problem happens, the local... Hora est. Mr. Candidate, the time allotted to the examination of your dissertation and its propositions has passed. The committee withdraws in order to deliberate, and we request that you await our return. Yeah. 
kan die daar weg. Dokter Aquino Diade is verdwenen inmiddels, begrijp ik dat ook. Completed the duty assigned to me. I may be the first to address you as doctor and congratulate you on the award of the dignity you have obtained. This honorable distinction is a well-deserved and highly valued privilege. At the same time, you are called upon never to lose sight of the obligations it imposes on you in the name of science and society. Dear Dr. Lemma, this is a great and much anticipated day. You have obtained your doctorate in the social sciences with an original important study. You thereby fulfill the long-standing personal wish to both understand more about a major social problem affecting your country, Ethiopia, as well as to personally advance in the world of learning. You have achieved both and I really commend you for that. During part of this dissertation journey, started slightly three, over three years ago, you had an important public function in Ethiopia and thus you worked over time on the research project with great motivation and perseverance. You have completed it well and we promoters, Professor Madeleine Hosley and me, are proud also because next to having yielded new data on a major region Arsi, of irregular migration and trafficking, of women. It is the first full-length written product of a wider project in which we are involved, combining academic and applied work on political administrative change in Ethiopia. I hope this study, which you just now enthusiastically defended, will make us contribution to better policy measure in Ethiopia, as well as mobilize public and research attention to the issue of female irregular migration, its complex underlying roots and its ramifications. As you rightly stressed in your thesis, not all women are involuntarily traded or trafficked from the start. There is often a thin line between being a passive victim driven by a certain despair to earn money somewhere or anywhere and being a more active agent seeking opportunities abroad but nevertheless still getting entangled in involuntary work contracts and webs of abuse. In this respect, the biographies of women which you included in the thesis were highly instructive and often even touching. The complexities of these life trajectories came out well and an in-depth understanding of these is very relevant for both policy measures and further field research. You have worked hard on this thesis, both at home in Ethiopia and when you were here at our center in Leiden for several periods of writing up during the past three years. When I came to visit you in the office at Leiden at the ACL office, our office, you usually were out uh, working in the AEC library until closing time. Otherwise, I saw you mostly at your desk, bent over the text day in, day out. You really worked hard on it. On this occasion, I also congratulate your family, who strongly encouraged and supported you. I remember you telling me that uh, the pressure from your teenage kids was mounting in the past year with questions like, when does he finish? When is that defense? But no doubt, this has encouraged you to forge ahead with the work. Um, also, your close friends and colleagues in government and elsewhere must be mentioned. They urged you to continue and enabled you to go and become an even better public servant to your country. I want to take this opportunity also to thank uh, second promoter Professor Madeleine Hosley and the members of the PhD committee who have provided excellent feedback on the thesis and stimulated you to significantly improve the dissertation text. Dear Lemma, it was a privilege to work with you. I hope you will carry the title with dignity and responsibility. I trust your work will be used to reflect on and enhance policy measures and eventually mitigate the problems of human trafficking in Ethiopia. Once more, my warmest congratulations and I wish you all the best for your future career. It is an agreeable duty for me, very learned sir, to congratulate you upon your degree, also on behalf of the university and its Council of Deans. And herewith, I declare this ceremony closed. And I'm sure that you will have time later during the day to have personal contacts to con for congratulations and so on. I see enthusiastic people already on the picture. We will move on here in the uh, 
um, groot klein auditorium of the Leiden University. Thank you very much and uh, have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you very much.